Good evening, Abai. How are you doing? How are you keeping? I hope all of you are doing fine at home. As most of you know, I am the guest, guest speaker for today. And first of all, before I start with my message, I would just like to take this time to thank God, as well as Pastor and Ern, for giving me this privilege to share the Word of God to all of you who are viewing today. So, let's get straight to my message for today. I've entitled my message as The Blessings of Obedience. So, blessings and obedience, they are two very, very common words, especially for churchgoers like us. I've heard people use this, these words countless and countless times. But yet, because it was used so much that without even realizing, I just slowly started to take those words for granted. But as I was preparing for this message, down and analyze the word blessings, I realized that this word has a little bit more depth to it. So let me tell you this. Let me bring across this statement to you that blessings does not equal to wages. Blessings does not equal to wages. They are two very different things. Wages is simply something that you work to earn. It is also another word for it is just salary. So we all know that wages is something that you need to work, you need to toil in order to earn it. Whereas blessings, blessings is something that you inherit. It is when I googled the word blessings, another meaning, another word for it is favor. So in this context, blessings of God is the favor of God upon our lives and you may ask if blessings is unearned it is inherited then how can we receive the blessings these blessings in our lives let me bring you to this scripture taken from Romans 8 verse 15 to 17 for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now that is your answer on how to receive the blessings. These blessings are not meant for us because the air is not us. The air is not you nor I. The air is Christ. And how can we receive the blessings of God? We need to be an heir to God. And since the, the air is Christ, only when we are united with Christ, when we are one with Christ, then we can be co-heirs with Christ and we can inherit His blessings. So, that brings us to our soul for this week. I believe all of you have read the soul that I've sent out in the group. And if you happen to read the soul in the NLT version, then you would realize, you would notice that the heading of that portion of scripture is also the title that I've taken for today. So let us read Deuteronomy 11 verse 8 to 15. It says, The blessings of obedience. Therefore, be careful to obey every command I am giving you today, so you may have strength to go in and take over the land you are about to enter. If you obey, you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors and to you, their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land you are about to enter and take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you came, where you planted your seed and made irrigation ditches with your foot as in a vegetable garden. Rather, the land you will soon take over is a land of hills and valleys, with plenty of rain, 
the land the Lord your God cares for. He watches over it through each season of the year. If you carefully obey the commands I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God and serve Him with all your heart and soul, then He will send the rains in their proper seasons, the early and late rains, so you can bring in your harvest of grain, new wine and olive oil. He will give you lush pasture land for your livestock and you yourselves will have all you want to eat. Amen. Such a wonderful scripture, isn't it? The Lord said that this land that He is giving you, He promised even your ancestors to give to you. This land is a land flowing with milk and honey. It is a land that He personally cares for. And He will watch over it through each season of the year. No matter which season of life you are in, whether in spring or in winter, in your highest points or in your lowest points in your life, He will watch over it if you obey the commands of God. So that brings us to our first point for today, which is obedience. See, the word obedience is very seldom heard in our generation especially. I feel like I've never heard anyone among my peers saying, using that word. To a lot of people in our generation, it may seem like something very old-fashioned. They feel like only older people use that word. So like sometimes like, because, because of that, it makes people in our generation even a bit ashamed to use that word because they don't want to be seen as old-fashioned. People in this generation, they are all about human rights, all about getting their own rights, they want their own say in life, they want to live their lives the way they want it, they want, they want to just, just do whatever they want because YOLO or something like that. But Obedience is very, very important, and we will see that in a short while. So now, let me ask you one question. Can we really be obedient? Can we really be obedient to God? So, recently, I've had um, the chance to go out late at night. I think it was just last week because of a sale. Um, those of you who are not familiar with how online sales work so it was actually the 1010 sale so like my brother actually my brother Joshua he actually wanted to um, buy an, this electronic device and usually during a sale these kind of electronic devices they are very in demand so people would snatch and like would do whatever they can to get get a hold of it. So knowing this, we wanted to purchase as soon as it is um, as as soon as it is discounted. We wanted to purchase it as soon as it is um, available. So we and if you if you are familiar with online sales, you would know that. These kind of online sales, they start midnight, like 12 sharp. So at around 12, we already bought the product, but because I didn't have enough money in my card, so like we couldn't pay using card or anything. So we wanted to um, just pay use through 7-Eleven, which was an option given to us. And if you know about these deals, then you would know that Usually, um, products that are on demand, they would require you to quickly seal the deal. If you don't seal the deal quick enough, then other people might get the deal instead. So, knowing that we left our house as soon as possible, and because it starts at midnight, we left our house around midnight, 
and we went to 7-Eleven and as we are coming back from 7-Eleven we because I was driving so we stopped by this uh, we we approached we were, we were approaching this traffic light and the light was turning red so because it was already really really late at night and there weren't any cars around us so I was thinking I was actually hesitating should I really stop at the traffic light like how I would during the day and as I was hesitating some some cars who who were also there at that time they just zoomed past me and broke the traffic rules without hesitation so when we, we were talking about that and Joshua mentioned this he, he was saying wow oh, human beings like human beings really never really human beings just never really obey any law any rules because we just can't obey rules like they only obey rules when it is convenient for them they only obey the law when when they are restricted by it but when that law is taken away they will just do whatever they want so that is how in a real life scenario we see how men are just deceitful in their ways the heart of man is deceitful is born deceitful and let's see what the scripture says about whether we can be obedient or not as it says in Romans 5 verse 19 for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous so from this verse we know that we were born with that seed of disobedience when Adam fell at the Garden of Eden that seed of this disobedience was transferred to us by default that seed is the very core of us it is not from the outward in it is from the inward the heart of man itself is deceitful above all else and notice that the second man I mean the M in the second man is in capital letter so this this man is actually talking about Jesus through through Adam the seed of disobedience came through Adam but also now when because of one man's obedience which is Jesus the seed of obedience can also come through that man to all of us and do any of you know what is at the center of the word obedience if you take away the first three letters of the from the word obedience and you take away the last three letters from the word obedience you'll be left with the word die so the center of the word obedience is actually die you cannot be obedient unless you die because even in Romans 5 verse 19 it says that through one man's disobedience we were all made sinners so the only way to undo that is for us to die and how can we die when we are still living in this world so the only way is when we are united with Christ through his baptism walk together with him for three years die together with him when Christ died and as he was raised resurrected we too have been raised into a new life and now we can live in his obedience and also in Philippians 2 verse 6 to 8 it says who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross see Christ is our role model when it comes to obedience 
Christ is our ultimate role model actually and if Christ wasn't obedient if Christ wasn't obedient to the point of death if Christ shirked away from his calling from his responsibilities then we would never ever be able to be obedient in this filthy flesh so that's why when Christ was obedient to the point of death so that now we can have this now we can have this new life this new life that can be obedient to God and why is it very important for us to be obedient a lot of people now dislike the word obedience but actually why why should we even be obedient because our lives our experiences so far is only this short in the sight of God but our parents they have lived longer than us and that's why there's also a saying in Cantonese um, this saying is used by a lot of elders they would always tell the younger people this I have eaten more salt than you have grain grain or rice simply means that salt salt as little as they may be you don't put a lot of salt in your meals but even then they have eaten more of that amount than the amount that you usually have as your main staple which is for most Asians rice so that's that saying is just to tell us that they have experienced so much more in life than us and that's why we should be obedient to them also um, my dad told me this recently as well he he said he was actually telling me about his past like what happened in his past and his experiences in life so like um, as as just like any teen out there I would be like mm, yes yeah yeah okay all, all right um, noted kind of thing but but as he saw my reaction, he was like, you have to listen to what I say. Because I'm saying this for your own good. He, for him, someone who has lived longer than I ever have, who, have, who has experienced so much more in life, he can say that because he knows he knows what he went through he knows the mistakes that he did and he is saying that out of love so if our earthly father can say that what more our heavenly father let me bring you to this scripture taken from deuteronomy 10 verse 13 and you must always obey the lord's commands and decrees that i am giving you today for your own good You see, not only my earthly father is saying this, but even my earth, my heavenly father is saying this. Because it is very true. Some of us, you may feel like, uh, their experiences are different from mine. People go through things differently. Yes, they, that may be true to a certain extent, but ultimately, our experiences are very, very similar. Sometimes when we do something, it will lead to consequences and for people who have already done that same mistake they know what are the consequences so it is actually more beneficial to be obedient than to be disobedient because when we are obedient we can learn from their mistakes we can avoid those mistakes in life we can avoid that natural painful process of life that everyone is going through and as i've said our experiences are only this much in the sight of god our parents who have lived longer than us maybe maybe they've lived this long but for god who is not limited by time nor space he he sees everything he knows everything and he knows every single strand of hair that we have on our head so what more so if we if we say we must obey our parents obey our elders 
what more the word of God. So with that, I have actually three sub-points from the first point. The first sub-point is obedience to the word of God. The word of God and God, they are one. So when we disobey the word of God, we are disobeying God. And when we obey the word of God, we are obeying God as well. So let us look at these two points in the life of a Bible character. And that Bible character is Abraham, our father of faith. Abraham was a very obedient man. He was always obedient to the word of God, obedient to God by faith. When God called him in Genesis 12 verse 1 to 4, it says, The call of Abram, the Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. So it is not easy for Abraham to actually leave everything that he has. Sometimes like we read these kind of stories and be like, mm, yeah, it's, it's easy for Abraham for him to leave everything and just go but actually it is not easy imagine if god just tells you suddenly all of a sudden leave everything that you have and go to somewhere that you don't even know and possess that land will you will you be able to do that will you obey god and go leaving everything that you have behind but because a Ab abram listen because abram obeyed god's instructions god blessed him and because of him many were blessed as well and and because he was so blessed god blessed him with so much riches that his his riches became exceedingly great one day abram's herdsmen and lot Lot, his nephew's herdsman, started fighting. And to avoid that, Ab Abram told Lot, we, we will separate. They, they separated, and Abram told Lot this, wherever you go, I will go in the opposite direction. So if you go left, I will go right. If you go north, I will go south. That simply tells us about how Abram was always so focused on God. He never cared about what may happen to him, what may happen to his surroundings, what may happen to his possessions. His focus was always God. Whereas on the other hand, Lot was more attracted to the world. He saw when Abram told him to choose a land, Abram, Lot saw that Sodom and Gomorrah was a very prosperous land. It was very fruitful and because of that he was attracted to it and he chose Sodom and Gomorrah and you can see how God blessed Abram when they separated it says in Genesis 13 verse 14 to 15 after Lot had gone the Lord said to Abram look as far as you can see in every direction north and south, east and west. I am giving you all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. So you see, God always blessed Abram because of how obedient he was. He, would, he never really cared about what may happen to him, but his focus was always God. And that's why God blessed him even more and on another occasion you can see how Abram was 
Abram was obedient to God. In Genesis 22, verse 16 to 18, This is what the Lord says, Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of your, their enemies, and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. God sees the heart. God only. God is only concerned about our heart. God is greater than our hearts. And he knows that Abram was a very obedient man. Abram was even obedient to the point where he would sacrifice his one and only son, his only son that was promised to him by God. And he waited for 25 years to get that son. But even then, he did not withhold his that son from God because he knows that God is his provider and God will take care of everything of his God will take care of his life and if God can provide a son to him God will always God will take care of him even if he doesn't withhold if he doesn't withhold his son from him And the last sub point for this first point is obedience to the Church of God. This sub point can be seen in the story of how Jacob stole Esau's birthright. As we've also read this story before, Esau is the firstborn. So his blessings, Isaac's blessings, were meant for Esau. They were Esau was supposed to inherit. Isaac's blessings. But then Rebecca, which in this context symbolizes the Church of God, taught Jacob how to receive the blessings from his father. And Jacob and Esau, they are very different people. Esau is hairy. He is a hunter. But Jacob has Jacob is a very smooth skinned guy. So he he was actually like can i can i really receive my father's blessings but rebecca assured him because rebecca knows how to receive his father's blessings and he knows what the father likes taken from genesis 27 verse 8 now my son listen to me do exactly as i tell you Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish. Then take the food to your father so he can eat it and bless you before he dies. So in this portion of scripture, Rebecca told Jacob to do exactly as I say. Simply says to be obedient to the church of God because Rebecca symbolizes the Church of God. So she simply instructed Jacob on what to do down to the details to prepare two fine young goats and to and everything was actually done by Rebecca. Jacob was actually only told to do exactly as she says. Because it also says here that I will use them to make your father's favorite dish. So Rebecca knows Isaac the best. Just like how the Church of God knows God the best. The Church of God knows what God likes. The Church of God knows what pleases God. And so because the Church of God knows what God likes, when we do as the Church of God says, we can receive the blessings. And in Genesis 27 verse 14 to 17, it says, So Jacob went out and got the two young goats for, for his mother, Rebecca took them and prepared a delicious meal, just the way Isaac liked it. Then she took Esau's favorite clothes, which were there in the house, and gave them to her younger son, Jacob. She covered his arms and, smooth, and the smooth part of his neck with the skin of the young goats. 
Then she gave Jacob the delicious meal, including freshly baked bread. Rebecca knows exactly what Isaac likes, and Rebecca knows exactly how to receive the blessings of God. So she instructed Jacob down to the details on how to receive the blessings of God. And if you read in the next verse, in the next few verses taken from Genesis 27 verse 21 to 23 says then Isaac said to Jacob come closer so I can touch you and make sure that you really are Esau so Jacob went closer to his father and Isaac touched him the voice is Jacob's but the hands are Esau's Isaac said but he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands felt hairy, just like Esau's. So Isaac prepared to bless Jacob. And indeed, if you read the scriptures after that, Isaac did bless Jacob. When after Jacob presented Isaac with the delicious meal that Rebekah made for Isaac. So this really so this really tells you how well the church of god knows god how well rebecca knows isaac and it is only through the church of god that we can receive the blessings because god communicates through the church of god the church of god knows what god likes and if you see here this line really touched me when isaac said the voice is jacob's but the hands are esau's so this means that sometimes in the flesh we, we still have we still carry the flesh and satan will always try to tell us that you are still jacob you are still jacob but as far as god is concerned he only sees us as his firstborn because we are in christ god only sees us in christ god doesn't see us as jacob anymore he only sees us as his firstborn and sometimes the Satan will always try to tell us that you are still Jacob, you are in the flesh, your flesh is wicked. Sometimes when, especially when we sin, Satan will always try to take that opportunity to tell us of who we once were. But know that when you are united with Christ, died with him and resurrected with him, you are no longer who you once were. As far as God is concerned, He only sees us as His firstborn. He only sees us as Christ. The only problem is with us. Sometimes we see our flesh and we feel like God will not bless us. But always put Satan at the bottom of our feet. Don't let him climb all the way to our minds and tell us who we once were. And with that, we will move on to our second point, which is strength. Let, let us once again read from our main verses for today, taken from Deut Deuteronomy 11 verse 8, where all the points are developed. Therefore, be careful to obey every command I am giving you today, so you may have strength to go in. Strength. The second point is strength. This strength talks about God's strength, not our strength. The main problem with the Israelites as they are on their journey to possess the land that God promised to even their ancestors is that they always look to their own circumstances and look to their own strength. And as a result, they start to disobey God and they start to rebel against God. But many times, God will always remind them of what He has done for them. He, he, he has done so much for them. Even when they were still in Egypt, He, he delivered them out of Egypt. He parted the Red Sea for them. He provided food when they need, when they need, when they need it. But yet, they, was, they still always focused on their on their abilities on what they can do and as a result 
they couldn't possess that land that God intended for them to possess. Taken from Deuteronomy 1 verse 29 to 31, But I said to you, don't be shocked or afraid of them. The Lord your God is going ahead of you. He will fight for you just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw how the Lord your God cared for you all along the way as you traveled through the wilderness, just as a father cares for his child. Now he has brought you to this place. So this scripture is actually taken place after the children of Israel got to know that the hindrance to them entering the land is also the descendants of Anak. And the descendants of Anak, they are very tall and powerful people and they must have been very intimidating as well. So because of that, the children of Israel were very fearful and they disobeyed God to move forward. In our lives as well, we may have, we may face a lot of giants along the way. Some giants may seem too impossible to overcome and we feel like as though we are so weak and it is so impossible for us to conquer. But yet, God assured us times and times again that, and assured them times and times again that it is not them fighting. The Lord will fight for you. And I really like this one line that says, Just as a father cares for his child, we are the children of God when we are united with him through Christ. Just as Christ is his child, we can be children of God as well. And what father doesn't care for his child? So be rest assured that he will definitely fight for you. And also it says in a few other verses, Exodus 14.14, 14, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And in Psalms 46 verse 10a, he says, But still, it be still, and know that I am God. Also in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 12, it says, Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. These verses strengthened whatever God just said in Deuteronomy. That he, he is telling us, Again and again, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Be still and know that I am your God. Our eyes, our focus should really be on Him because the battle belongs to the Lord. It's not us who are fighting. He is telling us, He is instructing us times and times again to not fight those battles on our own. He will fight for us. We only need to be still. In order to have that confidence that he will definitely fight for us. We have to know that we have to know who is our God. And how we know who is our God is by remembering what God has done for us in the past, what God has done for the people around us, and what God has done for the Bible characters. So when we remember what He has done for us, for all the mentioned people, then we will have confidence that He will definitely fight for us. And henceforth, we can be still. Because we know that we only need to keep our focus on Him. And also it says in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, And He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So even Paul is saying that he would rather boast in his infirmities because we are all very weak in our flesh. We cannot fight this battle. The only way we can fight is when we are still, when we regain our position in Christ. Because when we, we are in that position, the Satan has no power against us. And even Satan knows that. That's so why he's trying to put us, 
put, put us in where we once were, but we should. That's why we should always contend for the faith, always fight, and put him back beneath our feet. Do not let him creep up to our head and tell us who we once were, and what, how we were before Christ has already conquered everything for us. Because our victory is in Christ. Last but not least, we have come to our last point for today, which is rain. So let us read our main verse again. Deuteronomy 11 verse 8 Therefore be careful to obey every command I am giving you today, so you may have strength to go in and take over the land you are about to enter. This land that is talking about here is the land that God has provided for us, where God intends for us to be. It is for us to reign with Christ. As it says in Romans 5 verse 21, So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So this eternal life, we all know that this eternal life is the Zoe life. It is the kingdom life on earth. It is not a life that is just to be enjoyed thereafter, but it is a life to be enjoyed right now. You don't want to suffer right now and then only enjoy thereafter. God intends for us to enjoy even now. So now I ask you, why rain? Sometimes you might think, it's fine as long as we are born again it's fine like why should we reign we are already born again like we already we are already secured but it is very important to reign we'll see why is it important to reign through the lives of four characters in the bible and bear in mind that these four are all righteous people however their journeys were very very different the first pair is Abraham and Lot. Abraham and Lot, we learned before this just now, that Abraham obeyed God and therefore he was blessed abundantly. However, Lot, he was more attracted to the world. Abraham kept his focus only on God, but Lot was more attracted to the world and therefore he chose Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, even though Lot's focus was on the world, God still blessed him by preserving his soul. In 2 Peter, you can read that God actually said that the reason why he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was actually to preserve Lot from getting corrupted because the land was exceedingly wicked. So if he knew that if Lot were to stay there even longer, he would get corrupted even more corrupted. So that's why he brought him out and that is the grace of God. That he he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah only after he brought Lot out of that land. As for Abraham, he was very very blessed. Yes, he has done a lot of mistakes and due to his cowardice, he he made a lot of decisions because he was very fearful. But even then, he was very blessed. And God even said that because of him, his de descendants will be blessed. And all the families on earth will be blessed through you. Similarly for us, those who have been blessed, we too can bless others. Others can be blessed through us. The next pair will be David and Solomon, father and son. David and Solomon started off the same and ended the same. They started off right. David and Solomon, they both seek God to be good kings. And although they both ended the same, they both were safe at the end, kept safe at the end. However, their journeys were very, very different. Solomon, he was, in all his wisdom, he kept concubines and he even brought in idols. However, in the end, he said, vanity, vanity. Someone as wise as him said that at the end of the day, nothing 
none of these brought him joy. He couldn't reign because of his decision, even though he was saved at the end. As for David, even though it may seem like his life was very challenging and he made a lot of mistakes as well, but God said he was a man after his own heart and he was a very worshipful person. So you can see from the lives of these four people that these two pairings, one rain, one didn't rain, one rain, one didn't rain. So which life do you want to choose is really up to you. You decide whether you want to rain or do you want to just just live about your life recklessly and carelessly. Before we reign, let us see this land, how beautiful this land is, the land that God has prepared for us. Taken from Deuteronomy 8 verse 6 to 9, it says, So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in His ways and fearing Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of flowing streams and pools of water with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, fig trees and pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. So from this scripture you can see how beautiful is this land that God has intended for us. It is a land that lacks nothing. God intended for us to enjoy, to, to go in and possess this land. But just like the children of Israel, we too can look to our circumstances and doubt God's faithfulness to us and choose to rebel against God. As you can see in Deuteronomy 1 verse 34 to 36, it says, When the Lord heard your complaining, he became very angry, so he solemnly swore, Not one of you from this wicked generation will live to see the good land I swore to give to your ancestors, except Caleb son of Jephunneh. He will see this land because he has followed the Lord completely. I will give to him and his descendants some of the very land he explored during this scouting mission. So, even though this land was promised to them, many couldn't enter. Many couldn't enter and enjoy this land simply because they didn't obey the commands of God. They they always look to themselves and they doubt they start to doubt God and rebel against God. That's why only the younger generation here it says Caleb. Caleb could enter because he followed the Lord completely. He obeyed the word of God. So in summary, for you to remember this message easier, just remember this one sentence. Only those who obey will have strength to reign. And a word of encouragement to all of you taken from Psalms 128 verse 1. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. Thank you.